Uh, welcome to day two of TDX. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed last night. Uh, if it was Macklemore or just catching up with friends or, or going for dinner. Um, here to talk about second generation packaging. This is actually the, the first time that I've given this talk, so I'd be interested in kind of the experience level of who's here in terms of how to pitch this. So by show of hands, has anyone started using second generation packaging? It's not, not too many. Um, are people using SFDX and using the Salesforce CLI? Can show of hands? OK, cool. So everyone's pretty familiar with the new stuff, um, but not the new, new stuff. OK. Uh, just before I get going, uh, so I'm Kevin. I'm the CEO of a company called Gearset. Uh, we're, uh, I haven't quite started the countdown clock. Cheers, man. Um, I'm the comp uh, CEO of a company called Gearset. Um, we're a Salesforce DevOps vendor, so if you're having any problems with chain sets or you want to get some continuous integration, version control, even if you're using the Salesforce CLI to do that, but you've got uh, maybe a team of admins or some people are still doing in-org development and you want to find a way to collaborate, um, then you should come and, come and talk to us afterwards. Uh, you can either come and ask me questions or else we're downstairs in the, the dev zone as well. Um, okay, so that's talking about second generation packaging. So to, to talk about what it is, we kind of have to think about where we are today, the, the context of the problem that you know, drives, uh, drives us to look for uh, packaging. And packaging is actually interesting. It's not, it's not a terribly new technology. It's kind of the fundamentals have been in the platform for a while. Um, it's more of a shift of process. It's a shift of, of engineering, really, and engineering rigor rather than a new piece of technology. So a phrase you probably hear a lot is happy soup. Salesforce talk about it in their literature. And I, I refer to this deliciously happy soup because it's been a really fantastic way to work for a big number of years where all of the components in your org, LWC or Apex or Visual Force, like whatever, whatever piece of metadata, they all exist pretty much on a peer with each other. They all exist in this one space. And it's kind of hard to explain because we've never had to name that space before. It's like a, having a building that's just a big empty room. You don't need to name that room, it just is. And it's only when you start to partition it, you then start to think about you know, what was there before. But everything in the org kind of exists in, in one place, which has been great for productivity, um, but it's not been very good for engineering rigor, and it's not solid. Um, again, show of hands, has anyone come across solid before, that acronym? Okay, one person, great. A couple people, great. Um, so SOLID's a, it's a, an acronym that stands for a bunch of engineering principles. Like the S is single responsibility principle. And it says that any software component, so Apex class or LWC or whatever, should be really, really focused. It should do one thing and one thing only. So if you have to put like AND in the name of your controller class, that's a bit of a code smell and you should you know, have a second class. And the, the rest of them, stand for, for other things. There's the open close principle and the Liskov substitution principle and uh, interface segregation. There's all these principles that if you build your software that way, it kind of guides you towards building really structured, scalable systems. Um, we, we haven't really had to think about that very much on Salesforce because the platform hid so much of the complexity from us that it just wasn't that important. Um, so that happy soup does not lead to solidly designed uh, systems. You end up with really difficult to achieve isolation and really easy to achieve coupling, which is a, a bad mix. So if we make it like really concrete, let's say you've got an app, two apps in your Salesforce org. One is um, like an expenses app for tracking the expense claims of your employees. And the other is inventory stock tracking for like a warehouse or something. It's two radically different things, maybe maintained by different teams. One deals with your internal employees. One deals with maybe like your vendor supplies, suppliers and things. Um, at the moment, they both exist inside the same space. So it's hard to change them independently, safely, without risk and impacting the other, because there's no isolation. And it's really easy to accidentally take a dependency. Maybe we end up using the same common object and we didn't realize. So it requires a lot of discipline at the moment, and the system doesn't put in a lot of safeguards to help codify that discipline, to help codify that says, this stuff over here 
that belongs to my expenses app. This stuff over here, that belongs to my uh, stock app, and need you know never shall we meet. Um, once you get that codified in and you end up with nice separate isolated components, it's then really easy to do parallel streams of work. So at the moment it requires a lot of discipline to do it. It's totally doable and tools like Gearset make it a lot easier. Um, so I'm not saying there's no software design in Salesforce, there obviously is, but it requires us to do a lot of extra disciplined work that a packaging maybe would, would solve for us. And at, uh, at the moment, Deployments are more difficult than they need to be. We think in terms, we think at the wrong layer of granularity. So we think about deploying Apex classes and Visual Force and some profiles and permissions. We're thinking about the individual components when really what we want to be thinking about is just the package, this app or this portion of the app. We don't really want to think about you know, the, the nitty granular, granular uh, components within it because then we have to keep track of them. We have to make sure that when we move them from one environment to the other, we're always moving all of them together. And again, that's all work on our part, when really we want to codify that says, this stuff is all a unit. So that's, that's the sort of outlay as, as we see it when we speak to customers. So packaging to the rescue. Uh, broadly, yes. The, the big thing that's going to give us, and again, this is more of a, a process change rather than a, like a brand new technology. But the big thing it's going to give us is grouping. So we can say that these bunch of components all belong together. They will always travel as a unit. They will never be apart ever again. Um, if you change one, you're changing all of them. And they semantically mean something. So we're going to ascribe a name, not just to the individual components, but those components together. They'll have a name and a version, and they, they'll become a unit. So you said they're, they're versioned, and what that means is that if you change an Apex class, rather than just you know, migrating that Apex class change, instead what you'll do is create a new version of all of the components that belong to that package. So changing any one of them requires that you now just bump all of them, because then they'll travel as a coherent, cohesive unit. All of those things are always belong and are tested together. Uh, packages are generally very small and focused, so it's it's all a bit of a spectrum in terms of where you want to draw the line on this. But if you think of that expenses app, you know you probably want to split that up into lots and lots of components that teams could work on and maybe share with the stock app, but share it in a way that's controlled. Um, so apps typically are made up of lots and lots of packages. It's not just that level of segregation. And it's solidifying with other platform norms. So Pretty much every other platform, Java or .NET or JavaScript and NPM and Node, you know, choose your poison. Almost every other platform works this way. Um, so this is bringing that paradigm and all those software development techniques uh, to the Salesforce platform as well. Uh, a thing that we really often hear when customers start down this journey is we use Git for versioning. Do we need packaging? Or, well, we want to do packaging. Do we need Git? And how do those two things interact? And yeah, by the show of hands earlier with, uh, with SSDX knowledge, I'm guessing you guys are all, most of you are going to be very comfortable with Git. You're aware that it's for tracking code change. You do lots and lots and lots of commits. Packaging is pure distribution. So you'll do lots and lots of Git commits before you say, this next version of this uh, package is ready to go. I'm going to create a new version of that, which will have many components within it, many days or weeks of Git work, and that'll all now get versioned as a unit. So one's for development and one's for uh, distribution, essentially. If this is great, why haven't we always worked this way? Why didn't Salesforce bake this in from the start? Um, my, own, my own hunch in this is really it comes out of the evolved, uh, evolved complexity. There was a time years ago when Salesforce wasn't so complex, and we as a community weren't building apps that were as complex, as the platforms got more and more and more powerful and we can do more and more with it, there's now increased complexity where we now need to be able to uh, structure things. There's also the general um, you know, culture of uh, moving fast. The power and productivity of the Lightning platform is that we can make changes really quickly. I know when I'm doing Salesforce development work, the platform, because it takes, it holds my hand so much and I don't need to think about things, 
just as much as when I'm doing uh, other languages, um, the clicks not code mentality doesn't promote upfront software design. And I don't mean like usability design. I mean the components, how they communicate, how they're structured, uh, who's responsible, what the public boundaries of those interfaces look like. Salesforce has hidden most of that from me. I don't need to think about it most of the time. But now as I'm starting to work on more and more complex projects with more and more independent teams, that's starting to become an issue for some teams. And version control was really the, the price of entry for all of this. So version control is a relative latecomer to uh, the Salesforce ecosystem. It's only really catching on the, the last number of years. And the tooling's only really starting to be there to make it really work and externalize all of that source. Um, so that, that was a necessary uh, step as well. So what does this look like in practice? Um, rather than watching me fumble at the keyboard and, and mistype all these commands, I've just taken some screenshots that walk you through a flow of starting with a blank workspace, creating a package, doing some work, versioning it and deploying it so you can get an idea of what's new, what's the same, and how it all works together. So everything is pretty much CLI based at this point. Um, so I'll, that's sort of like the, the GUIs on top of it, so like the stuff that we're doing, all eventually goes down to these kinds of primitives. So I'll show you this step by step so you can get an idea of what's actually happening. So you start with the SFDX tool, uh, you issue a force project create. So I've got a totally blank workspace, give me a project. Let's call this project my expenses app. Um, you'll notice there one of the things that uh, gets created with an SFDX project is this SFDX project.json, very aptly named. Um, and that'll be important later for uh, how packaging all hangs together. So before I do any work in my workspace, what I'm going to do first of all is create a package. The package that I'm going to create is called expenses, and it's an unlock package. So an unlock package is the default second generation packaging. And what it allows us to do is group things together, give them a name, call it expenses. All the components that I'm about to work on are all part of this expenses package. But you can still see the individual components. So when I come to deploy this package into production, I'll still be able to see it. I'll be able to see those individual components. I can even change them, which introduces some interest in things down the line. Um, so they're not opaque. It's not like a managed package from the App Exchange. The great news is, the work that you do then is just the exact same. So if you want to build in VS Code, doing like offline uh, stuff that they announced yesterday, if you want to use the Vulkan Suite or Illuminated Cloud, if you want to keep working in an org or scratch orgs the way you always have, nothing, nothing changes. Uh, you just sort of top and tail your process now with a little bit of extra stuff. Um, so once I've done all my work, the same as I've always done, I can pull those changes locally. But now when I come to share them, I'm going to do that by creating a version of my package. So I'll do SFDX force package version create. And I've updated that SFDX project JSON to say, uh, as, as part of the work I was doing, maybe I updated some Apex, I updated some JavaScript. And I also updated that SFDX project JSON to say, OK, this work now constitutes a new version of this package. All of these things have changed suitably. I'm ready to share it with the world. So again, give it my name and my version gets created. When the version's created, you can see this installation URL. So you can share that with someone. That's a package that would exist now like the App Exchange packages. It exists in your dev hub, and it's private and secure. But you can give that to any of your colleagues that are in the same team as you, and they can install it. And then when you come to deploy it, you can either give them that URL, or typically as part of like a CI flow, you're going to issue a command line, again, for force package install. And that will install it. You'll notice I'm not saying to install these components. I'm not saying to install this Apex. I'm not saying there's no package.xml here at any point to say what the list is. I'm installing the package. And it knows what's within it. It's all semantically grouped together as an expenses thing. So that's the, the version number there that you can specify. And it'll install that version number into my org. Uh, some things to consider uh, as you approach this. Uh, currently all CLI based, so by the show of hands earlier, lots of people are using the CLI, so that's, that's great. Um, if you're not, then that might be a bit of a learning curve for you there. There's uh, UIs on top of this. GearSec can do a bunch of stuff to help you here. But this is a very, very fast moving, evolving part of the ecosystem. So being comfortable with like, falling back to those command line tools that are getting revved you know, weekly by Salesforce at this point. Um, that would be a handy, handy skill to have in your arsenal. 
as I mentioned, those packages are unlocked. So when they get installed into your production org, um, you can still make changes to them. And that's very different than other ecosystems. Normally, those packages are what are referred to as immutable. They're created. They're sacrosanct. You can't ever modify them. If you want to modify them, you have to create a new version. And that creates a really coherent line uh, lineage for them. With Salesforce, and just reflecting the fact that you, know, you have awesome admins doing work in production, they're doing that work for a reason. It's delivering value to the business. Sometimes you do have to sidestep the process if it's just like a pick list change or something. Um, when they do that, that's not going to automatically go back into the package version and bump all that stuff. So there's a little bit of housekeeping that you have to do there. And that's an interesting sort of open, open challenge. It's going to require some upfront software design. Components can only exist in one package. And packages can only be installed. Sorry, one version, a single version of a package can only be installed in an org at once. So now think about, does that custom object belong to this package? Or this package? Where does it make more sense? Which team owns it? And that's really, really hard. So I've been a professional software engineer for 10 years, and I'm still no good at this. Like, this is a really, really hard problem. Uh, diamond dependencies are too hard to explain, so I drew a little diagram. Uh, this is when you think about the expenses app that we've decomposed into a few different packages. So there's the expenses app. Maybe that's got some UI. There's a set of Apex classes that can like, generate limits or something that describe the CEO is allowed to spend what he wants and other people aren't. Um, then there's a separate package, which is the reporting components. And that's how we understand what our employees are spending. So they're nicely versioned independently. They get to be separate, and we have really uh, high isolation and low coupling. It's nice, solid principles. It's all fantastic. But they both depend on a common data model. So because there's a diamond dependency, if I want to ch make, let's say for reporting, I want to make a change, and that requires a change in the data model. To deploy the reporting, I need to deploy the new version of the data model. But the uh, limits library depended on the old version of the data model. So now I have to move everything together. And that just gets really, really complex. This is like the simplest version of this. But you can obviously end up with very, very complex dependency graphs. Uh, what should you start with? I would say start with something on the fringe of your organization, something that you can kind of make mistakes with, because you almost certainly will make mistakes with this. Um, and the reason I didn't do a live demo wasn't just because then I'd like do typos. Some of this stuff is a little bit fragile at the moment. Um, so be prepared to be patient with it. The tool set and the promise of what's coming is amazing. Um, but it takes a little bit of um, patience today to, to get there with it. If this has whet your appetite for what you can do with packaging, there's actually a talk later today um, in room 2004 at 1 PM. And it's a, like a more interactive version, digging into more detail. I can't remember the speaker, but I'm pretty sure it's a, a Salesforce employee. So that should be a, a great session to go to if you did want to learn more. I'm happy to stick around and answer questions. If you have any, I'm by no means an expert in this, but I'll, I'll try my best. Or you can grab us downstairs in the booth at any time. We love talking about this sort of stuff. Thanks very much.